Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to Slay the Princess. What new choices will we unlock on our third death? Let's see. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Technically, it was our second death, but we're on our way to our third. Tricks. What on earth are you talking about? We just met for the first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Is this the new guy? Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love. And the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. That's crazy who would do something like that. <laughs> what can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. Amen, brother. Uh, almost clicked on something on accident. To assume I'm telling the truth and all this really did happen, why would I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? That's really our t only, yeah. Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. You were the one who did us in, villain. Well, not you in the literal sense, but you did everything you could to stop us from rescuing her. Oh, I wonder why. Maybe it's because the entire world was at stake. No lone princess is worth that price. I beg to differ. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to take a deep breath and assume that whoever is making the decisions here has the common sense to ignore your protestations. Anyway, I believe your second question was, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. Uh, define consequences, uh... What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yeah. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Uh... I agree. If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? Well, if we're here now, then why should we care? She would never. She's a perfect angel that you cruelly imprisoned as part of some convoluted, dastardly scheme. Okay, well, I wouldn't agree that she's a perfect angel. Convoluted? I don't know how this premise could be any more simple. Princess bad, stop her, save everyone. Uh, okay, let's talk about this princess. Just be quick about it. That's a good one. People locked her in that basement, and I okay. told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Okay. Yep. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. What if this whole situation is like that one episode from Black Mirror? The one where, you know, it's like they keep getting separated, but they keep trying to get back with each other, no matter what the world does to separate them. And at the end of the episode, it's just like, it's like an algorithm for their, you know, percentage to match on a dating app. And that was, it was, it was a really good episode. Oh. 
I didn't know we were special. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? Calling us special isn't going to make us friends. Even if it did feel nice. Oh, believe me, the last thing I want is for you and I to be friends. But I'm a professional. I'm not going to let my dislike for you get in the way of helping you save the world. The only reason she was even able to kill me last time was because I let her. She could barely hold a knife. How is she supposed to end the world? So, I'm assuming if I select this one, he's just going to give me the same song and dance he gave me before. Who knows how she's going to end the world? She's just going to do it. She just can. Yup. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. Maybe it's her beauty that threatens the world. Sure, it's her beauty. Why not? And before you ask, no, we can't just keep her down there. If you don't slay her, she's going to find a way out. It's unfortunate, I know, but it's just the way it is. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. I've, if you can just do it, do it. I don't, I don't understand. Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to take me at my word. Okay. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. I'm with them. I'm going to find a way to save her from that cabin. I am with them. Yep. That's right. You can't stop all of us. We're going to sweep her off her feet if it's the last thing anyone does. Yep. Are these really the sorts of people you'd like to align yourself with? Yep. You're not at the cabin yet. You still have plenty of time to reflect on the situation. I just hope for all our sakes that you make the right call. Oh, fuck. Sorry for yawning. I always make the call. To leave. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Okay. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. Are the windows new? The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I still, I, I still want to approach the mirror every time. Very different. Is it? I can't say I was paying much attention to the scenery last time around. I also don't remember Smitten be around, being around last time. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the prince. So focus up. Stop letting yourself get distracted. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. What are you talking about? This isn't a wall. It's a mirror. Or at least it'll be a mirror once we wipe off that layer of grime. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But there was a mirror a second ago, and now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place, and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. A feather? What the hell are we? You take the blade from the table. 
It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. I suppose if we're to play the role of dashing knight, we need an equally dashing sword. That's not a sword. Know we can defend her from her enemies. Hopefully it doesn't put her on edge, and hopefully it doesn't get turned on us again. Who cares? Let's There's no use arguing go talk to her. Right now. It's good that you took the blade. You'll need it to do your job. Okay. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight, but it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. Okay. You walk down the stairs and lock Fucking eyes throw the knife the right at her. There's a heavy chain right out the around her wrist, window? binding her to the far wall. Okay, uh, we don't need that around our throat. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Do you hear that? She said we're dashing. Shouldn't she have forgotten about us? And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Doesn't it go from most people? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. Wait, wait, what exactly happened last time? It... I, what, it did it end with her... Yeah, it ended with her stabbing me multiple times. And apologizing. It didn't end with uh, being sent back. Okay, sorry, I forgot. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her. It was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end. And now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. You killed me last time, it hurt a lot. Why did you do that? Do I have to cut you out again? I really didn't care for that last time. What happened after I died? Okay, so I don't need that one. It's explore, so I can ask other things. So let's uh, start with this one. I'm okay with whatever you come up with. You can cut my arm off again. We won't be laying a finger on her perfect wrists. And indeed, we won't even have to. Do you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her right out with no harm done. What? No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. There's been like a few movies where I've seen like the main character like dislocate their, their thumb to like get the chain around their hand or a cuff or whatever it was. Why are you two arguing over the logistics of slipping her hand out of her shackles? She just said she'd be okay with any idea we came up with. Am I the only one here who thinks that's weird? She didn't care last time. Why should she care this time? That's our stoic, smiling angel. Is she really stoic if she's smiling? Isn't stoic supposed to be like a serious or like blink expression on your face? Or am I... Hold on, where's my phone? I'm curious. 
Stoic. Definition. A person who can endure pain or hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. Alright, you might be right about that. Because she, uh... She didn't change her face when she, uh, bit into the flesh of her arm. No, you're right. It's extremely bizarre behavior and further evidence that she's a monster who's not to be trusted. So go ahead and slay her. You died, and now we're talking. Okay, uh, not exactly the answer I wanted. Before we started talking, did the world end? Did you end the world? I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that I don't just like that. Like our darling princess, she wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. I didn't like her saying that. I don't know why. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. It just it's just lack of care of ending a world to make us happy. I I I feel strange about that. Uh, no, I don't want to end the world. I have no feelings one way or the other about the world ending. Honestly, the world sucks. People are a plague, and I hope you brought a Then I didn't end the world. Oh, cool. See, she didn't confess anything. She is innocence itself. True. I'm not so sure. Fair. I'm sorry about what happened last time. The narrator who sent me here to kill you took over my body. It was extremely unfair. If another version of me was pushed to such drastic action, it was for good reason. That's okay. You were just doing your best, and that's all that matters. Dude, I like the supportive princess. She took that in stride. To a surprising extent. An almost unsettling extent, actually. That's because she's perfect. Do you think she has someone like him telling her what to do? I mentioned this in the last video. I'm glad that it, it was brought up in the game. She doesn't. There's no one else like me. That's... We're not sure of that. I think he's right. Because I like it better if she doesn't have some horrid little voice like him, always trying to drive her to violence. Okay, let's rescue her. No, I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... Yes. Not on my watch, villain. My passions can... Let's skip something. Anic depths, and if you... Take over... Okay, yeah, I did. As I was gonna say, I just kind of skipped that. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? You approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it. I guess I have to. I told you, there's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh, are you sure you want to do this? Just one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade is buried in her back and everyone out there is saved. Is that a threat? You know what we'll do if you try it. You're going to regret this. What do we do now? I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. Yeah. I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. That's unfortunate. I mean, you sort of did last time, but this is different. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had it all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? I think I want to leave. And I think... The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh. I don't want to. I want you to tell me what you want. There must be something you want. Do you want to end the world? I just want to leave. We can figure out the rest later. If you want to leave, let's leave. I want you to tell me what you want. I just
just want to make you happy. I don't... She can't just want to make us happy. It makes sense to me. That's all I want for her, so of course she'd want the same for us. But what would... What would make you happy? I just want to make you happy. Is she... broken? What's going on? What's going on is she's lying to you, only she isn't a good liar. Are you starting to trust me now? Turn the tip of your blade towards the unsuspecting princess. Thank you. Wait. Oh, you barbarian, what are you doing? But you ignore the pleas of the foolish little voice and strike. The princess's eyes grow wide with terror as the blade falls, but she does absolutely nothing to stop you. Your blade pierces Whoa. her heart, and she collapses pathetically to the ground. I'm sorry. Did I do something wrong? No, 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 no. That's why I saved. No. My love, you did nothing wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not you. I'm going to die now. I think that's what you want. No, 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 no. And just like that, she's dead. Oh. The world is saved. Thank Slay an innocent so achievement so unlocked. Oh, shit. Oh, I feel sick. Sick? You took part in the murder of the fairest creature that's ever lived. And you merely feel sick. I, for one, am absolutely distraught, grief-stricken, inconsolable. You'll get over it. You just saved everyone. Yeah. Get over it. You smarmy ass. There's nothing in the world worth getting over it for. We might as well just end it all. You raise the blade, aiming the point directly towards your heart. Excuse me? No, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, let's not make any rash decisions. We should give ourselves a minute, take a deep breath, and rash. The only rash decision we've made was running our cursed blade through her heart. This is far from rash. This is measured. This is the only thing left for us to do now that she's gone. I am the one who makes the decisions here, and I say no. Exactly. You're not doing this. All of you may have previously thought that my passions were too great to stifle, but those were merely passions of joy. My passions of sorrow run deeper than the ocean itself, and you'll find that they are far more unstifleable. Haven't you? Haven't you all? I don't believe this. What? What don't you believe? You plunge the blade into your own heart and collapse to the floor. You can't be serious. Why are you helping him? I'm not. He just made it happen. I'm sorry. That's right. You're all sorry. Everything goes dark, and you die. But the princess is dead, so... Oh. You're on a path in the woods. You... Okay, stop. Alright, so... What I want to do... Is I want to load this and see where this takes me but I do kind of want to continue from this but I'm curious to know what she does now you just met me you can't base your entire happiness around me okay if that's what makes you happy this isn't right I don't know what's going on but this isn't right I fail to see the problem here she's just sweet on us you don't have to act like it's a big deal Sounds perfect. Huh? Oh, phew. She's back to normal. Normal? What are you talking about? Our angel has always been like this. Absolutely flawless. As the princess takes your hand in hers, you let your blade tumble uselessly to the floor, and with it tumbles the last hope for the entire world. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. 
she doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no, did someone lock us in here? That's not fair. We're supposed to leave now. She's right, it isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense, you just met her. Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Yeah, brother. Hey, do you think you can open it? Well, I don't know. Do you think I can? Yeah. Of course she can. You believe in her, right? Yeah, of course. Nobody is leaving this basement. Well, I guess you can call us nobody. Try it together with the power of love. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. And the lock clicks and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make your way upstairs. Her freedom and the world's ruin are just a few moments away. If you don't mind, I'm going to fix myself a drink before you ruin everything. If I'm about to see the end of the world, I'd rather not see it sober. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin, and then you step outside. This guy achievement called Romantic Haze, Your Love Will Set You Free. Our happy ending at last. We did it. What should we do now? W where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is he gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. And she was taken by the thing, and now there's no narrator. Alright, cool. Let's go back to this one. You horrid monster. Do you think just because we've returned to the woods you've earned my forgiveness? Our beloved had best be alive and well when we return to the cabin, or you'll never know the end of my wrath. A little safe scummy, but now we definitely know if she gets out, the world ends. Alright. She won't be alive and well when we return to that cabin. Because she's dead. We killed her. And now we get another new voice. You killed her. And so I killed you. And you clearly didn't do a good enough job. I'm still here. Oh, and I'm still here too. If you lot get to be blessed with seemingly eternal life, that must mean she's still there, waiting for us to throw ourselves at her feet in remorse. I doubt it. I think I'm better at killing than you are. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? One. It's our third. What gave it away? I haven't been here before. Your open discussions. I couldn't care less what he knows. Every second we stand around arguing in the woods is a second that I'm anxiously worrying about her. Take us to the cabin and take us there now. With each passing moment, our relationship may be damaged even further. Though I fear the rift between us may already be permanent. And if it is permanent, then what? He'll kill us again. Oh, you just wait and see. My vengeance will echo the depths of my bereavement. Don't provoke him. I'd prefer if we didn't die again. I'm not fond of dying. Why not? You've already done it twice. It was unpleasant. It was only unpleasant because you think it's supposed to be unpleasant. Okay, so the hero was here before, but... Me... As a player... Have not. I'll make you feel what I feel if it's the last thing I do. And mark my words, you won't like it when it happens. Oh. How exciting. 
I'd love to see you try. Can I? Well, I'm not just going to try. I'm going to actually do it. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I am too. Can I talk now? Yes, I can. Great. Now that you're listening, let me remind you that if you're here in the woods, it means that the princess is not dead and that her very existence currently poses a direct threat to the entire world. So you can't actually slay the princess. And if you let her out, the world ends. So, okay, cool, cool. We haven't talked enough about how different this place is. It wasn't uh, different last time. If this isn't the same path in the woods you're used to, that means that her influence is already spreading and you're running out of time. Wait, but if her influence is spreading, that means there's hope. That means our beloved is waiting up there for us, ready to make amends. Yes, I already told you that she's alive. <sighs> don't mind him. I don't think he's doing too well. I'm doing better than any of you. I'm doing great. She's alive. Influence doesn't require life. But if things restarted, why wouldn't she be alive? Who said they restarted? All they've done is changed. I shan't listen to the vile mutterings of you serpents. Onward! Our living, breathing princess awaits us. Hey, right, should we even try to kill her again? A little, a little fucking dagger gave me, it doesn't do much, so what's the point? Oh, it's clear, you murderer. Though I should remind you that you're not as in charge as you seem to think you are. Why don't you charge my balls in your mouth? I'm sure his outburst last time was Sorry. a fluke. I wouldn't worry about it. Besides, if he kills us again, he kills us again. It doesn't matter. He'll tire out eventually. The flame of passion always burns out in the end. Spoken like a true cynic. Enough bickering. Just stay focused and get to the cabin. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? Whatever happens next, it seems like all our answers are in the cabin. We might as well see this through. If we turn around, we're just gonna get I'm sure sent back. Heard it's my words of warning and kinda pointless. You've already managed to slay her once, just... <sighs> Don't muck it up this time, alright? She's gonna be pissed at us, though, because we killed her. Oh, we'll muck it up, alright. We'll get our happy ending, even if it damns each and every person who's ever lived. Kinda scared what the voice of Smitten determines as a happy ending. Whatever you do, don't let him influence a single decision. He's clearly lost it. Agreed. I hate that I'm agreeing with him on anything, but... I really don't like being at the whims of someone so unstable. It's stressful. Yeah. Yes. Having all those feelings isn't very productive, is it? But we're just passengers here. Why stress over something you can't control? You're saying that like stress is just something you can turn off. It is. It's easy. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever will happen, will happen. This is horribly unproductive. The cabin and your extremely important destiny await. Okay. The interior of the cabin feels uh. dry and brittle. Ancient dust-covered wooden beams hold up a crumbling ceiling like mummified ribs, each elegantly carved detail of the stately building preserved in an extended stasis. Everything here has been kept safe and dry and lifeless. But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the dusty wood of the far wall. Is that her? Our beloved. So she does live. She doesn't look very alive to me. That's a ghost. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room, but there isn't a door. It's just that damn mirror again. Ah, yes. The mirror, so we can see the monster we've become. If it even lets us look before it vanishes too. The mirror? Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Huh. That's strange. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. 
Why isn't there a pristine blade? <laughs> Stop calling it a pristine blade. It's a, a little dorky dagger. Maybe it's gone because we've already killed her with it. It was also in the basement, right? Perhaps it's gone because an oh-so-deserved guilt has started to worm its way into each and every one of you. Perhaps all of you do feel just as bad as I about what we've done. Oh, if you felt the oppressive guilt I feel, we would have manifested that weapon directly into our heart. I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. It's still so hazy. We should try and clean it off. Okay. Yes. Trying to touch it does seem to be the magic spell to get it out of our way. It's time for all of you to see what we've become. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. So much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. I see. We are too hideous for even a mirror to behold. We can only hope she might still see some good in us. No way left to go but down. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an antique staircase lit by weak torchlight. The air here is so stale it practically stands still, as if the very molecules of this place have been fossilized. Trapped for eons until your arrival. She looks very disappointed to see us. Even the blaze of the torches can't penetrate the odorless air. As if they'd run out of fuel to burn ages ago, their light still flickering more out of habit than from adhering to a physical reality. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadow. There she is again. My love. She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. Are we good? Hell yeah. You receive no response. Hell no. Do you think she's upset with us? I don't like being here unarmed after what happened last time. I feel so exposed. Of course she's livid, and with good reason. You aren't helping. Are you scared of a little ghost? What's she going to do? Look at us until we feel bad? She can look all she wants. It won't do anything. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor. Her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. But we got her out of that chain. This cell is a dark and isolated place with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. See? She's dead. No. What foul trickery is this? How can this be? We just saw her alive and well a moment ago, floating away transparently. Whatever we saw was a ghost. Thought we were all on the same page. Do try to keep up. Your thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. Ah, shit. You turn to see the shade of the princess staring down at you from the top of the stairs, clutching a brightly burning torch. So that's where the blade is. It's already in her heart. And yet she isn't dead. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, for the love of me, can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. Sorry, I right-clicked halfway through his monologue, and I didn't want to let go. Yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying or destroying, if we want to be a little more death-neutral, seems off the table. We make amends. She obviously still holds us in her heart. She's bearing a torch for us and everything. 
That was pretty good. I like that. That's a nice joke. But she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? You came back. I missed you. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. You sure snapped back to your old self quick. Yes. Seeing her dazzling countenance again has reignited the warmth in my heart. I have found it in me to forgive the sins this body has committed. We can have our perfect romance after all. This is a bad place. We're, We're supposed to be together, but it keeps making us hurt each other. The torch falls from the princess's hand and bounces down the stairs. It'll be so much better when it's gone. The skeletal wood of the basement, perfectly dry after uncountable years of desiccation, immediately catches fire. She's trying to kill us. A misplaced escalation of her passions, but clearly she still cares for us. I say we burn with her. Uh-huh. Rush for the blade, rush for the door. Let's rush for the blade. As you rush up the stairs towards the princess, the entire cabin erupts into a raging inferno. You push through the flames, trying to ignore the choking hot air filling your lungs. You manage to reach her, your hand wrapping around the hilt of the blade. But the metal is already blistering hot. Your hand sizzles as it melts on contact. You can't so much as pull away, your nerves seizing up as they're fried, the bones of your hand fusing in place around the weapon. The princess, smiling warmly as her skin bubbles away, places her hand on yours and clutches it to her chest. That's a cool thumbnail. Pain is unbearable at first. Every inch of you screams as your flesh is stripped away, your muscles stiffening as they're cooked, your blood boiling in your veins. But it isn't long before the flames take your nerves, and with them, your ability to feel much of anything. See? That wasn't so bad. It was so bad. But somehow, nothing is so much worse. You'll get used to it. There are still the feelings of the heart. Those never go away. Oh, they always do in the end. You just haven't experienced enough. Eventually you'll want them to stop too. You'll make them stop. Trust me. The princess's smile never fades. Her skin peels away, and then her muscle until all you can see is her charring skull, locked in an eternal grin. It's very romantic, really. We got our happy ending after all. We can die happy. But despite your best efforts, you do not die. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? Oh, where's that mirror? Why is it here? Why now? Yeah, this is fine. It's going to be okay. Just trust me. We've been here before, and you always get scared. But it feels so bad. Like, looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? It's not the end. Whatever's on the other side is going to be nice. It's going to be okay. Okay. If you say so. We trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it. You approach the mirror. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You've withered. I'm trying to like get a good look at us, but it's... It's weird. It's like we're a... Uh, do we have wings? Are we like a harpy? 
found yourself in the long quiet once again. You're at the cabin. I am a growing chorus of contradiction. A mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. And yet my waters flow and my streets bustle. There are no words that can describe me into non-existence. There is no logic that can bind my multitudes. I am everything that you have known me to be, but I am also none of it. I don't like this version of her. How can you stand to be a contradiction? As easily as you can stand to be you. You are oh. like me, even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit. Even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. It doesn't matter how many times I go back. At least one of us always hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? If anything, it makes me like you more. I don't know what that says about me. Not really. It all seems so distant as soon as I'm near you. Huh. It does seem small from here. And the more we journey, the smaller each of those steps will be. But that doesn't make any of them less special. What do you think of this vessel? This one is passion betrayed. But even in the end, her love never faded. She will make for a bright heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. Okay. You know that at the end of this, once you're finished, I'm going to kill. Ah, uh, we didn't say that last time, we're not going to say it this time. Do you know what happens to the worlds we leave behind? My perspectives are shadowed. You have seen what I have seen, just as I have seen what you have seen. The angles of my vantage do not offer me hidden truths, and my attention is turned inward, except when you are here with me. Perhaps this will change when our work is done. Okay. Have you figured out what you want when we finished? The desires of my multitude thrive in endless competition with themselves, but none of them rise above their dance to influence me. I yearn for what I have always yearned for, our awakening. Other desires shrink in the light of knowing you and knowing me. Do you still not care what I bring you next? How many more vessels? We will know when we near our destination. Okay. You still not care what I bring you next? I care about your gifts, but I have no preferences to burden you with. Even if I did, I would never dare to tarnish our relationship by assuming myself above you. This is a weird god creature, but I don't dislike her, I guess. You don't have any preferences on how you'd like to change or grow? The tides do not dictate where they are pulled. A river does not dictate its outlets. My gift to you is to let you choose your path, and my task is to treasure the gifts you bring me. Okay. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. Chapter 1 The Hero and the Princess You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is- Alright, well, that is a good place to end this episode of, uh, Slay the Princess. It's, it's, it's a very cool game. I love it a lot. Uh, but yeah. That's all I really have to say at the moment. I'm still very much confused. Don't get me wrong, but- Oh! 
That's bright. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.